Well, we begin this news hour with breaking news from Italy. Former Prime Minister Silvio Berlusconi has died at the age of 86. Berlusconi had served multiple terms as leader and was a powerful figure both in Italian politics and media. He was admitted to a hospital in Milan on Friday for what aides said were pre-planned tests related to his leukemia. The controversial businessman created Italy's largest media company and also briefly owned the leading football club, AC Milan. Berlusconi faced multiple legal and sex scandals, eventually leading to his resignation. Sarah Khairat takes a look back at his life and his career. Silvio Berlusconi was never happier than when performing in front of his supporters at home or on the global stage. His playful touch was loved by some, loathed by others. He was prime minister four times and was Italy's longest serving post-war leader. This one-time cruise ship, crooner turned property tycoon, went on to own Italy's biggest media empire and be chairman of his beloved football team, AC Milan. He wielded tremendous influence and with an estimated fortune of $9 billion, Berlusconi persuaded many Italians he was the right man to lead them. But controversy followed him, notoriety he sometimes seemed to relish. I am the most legally persecuted man of all times, in the whole history of mankind, worldwide, because I have been subjected to more than 2,500 court hearings. His charm works sometimes, even when he kept important friends waiting, but his attempts at humor often backfired. I have to bring you some greetings. Greetings from a man, what's his name? Just a minute, it was someone with a tan, Barack Obama. Then there was the personal vanity, the facelifts, the permanent tan, all the better for selling Italy's image abroad, or so he claimed. He rolled with the political punches as well as the literal ones assaulted during a campaign rally in Milan. As a litany of legal battles against him became more lurid, Italian patients wore thin. He was convicted of tax fraud in 2013 and later of political corruption, narrowly avoiding jail, but the convictions barred him from office until 2019. And then there was the accusations of organising sex parties attended by underage prostitutes. His political and personal dramas inspired a blockbuster movie. Silvia. It was the collapsing economy that would eventually seal his political fate. Italy's burden of debt took it to the brink of bankruptcy and Berlusconi into confrontation with European partners. In recent years, he faded from frontline politics dogged by health concerns. He recast himself as a nature lover and a family man. But he became a senator in 2022, and as leader of Forza Italia, the political party that he founded, he was never too far from the reins of power. Well, Al Jazeera's Hoda Abdul Hamid joins us now from Sardinia in Italy. Hoda, he's not been well for some time, right? Yeah, he has been actually not well ever since he got uh, COVID uh, a few years ago. And he actually said at the time that that was uh, the worst experience of his life. He never really fully recovered from that, coupled to the this form of leukemia that he had. Um, that things were quite difficult for him. He had spent already six weeks in hospital in Milan, the same hospital where he died earlier this year. He came in, they officially said it was for routine checkups. The, the hospital had said earlier uh, this morning that it was a quiet night, and then uh, things went very fast. His close family was called in, uh, his daughter was seen arriving, then his brother and his wife were seen arriving, and then the hospital eventually issued a statement saying that he had died. Mm. Uh, Hoda, his party is still in power, but it's now been relegated to being part of a coalition. How much influence did he wield there towards the end? I think he wielded influence all the way uh, towards the end. He did give his opinion uh, during the electoral the election campaign. Uh, his party, as you said, is part of the ruling coalition and has really his ideas have a, a huge impact on the political class in Italy at the moment. But he is a man who was very divisive at the same time. So you do have those who will continue saying that he was the best thing that happened to Italian politics since the Second World War. Certainly, he was the longest-serving 
prime minister uh, in recent uh, history. But there are those who also say that he has actually uh, embarrassed Italy with all his sex scandals, his corruption scandals, and also his very flamboyant way mm. of talking, sometimes saying very uh, shocking uh, statements. Uh, he had also friendships that were quite questionable, uh, either locally here in Italy or, for example, he was a big friend of uh, Vladimir Putin. You would see both men here in Sardinia yachting uh, together. And until the very end, he refused to take a stand against Russia in this uh, war with uh, Ukraine. So certainly a man who had uh, very strong ideas, very decisive ideas, had a huge impact in Italy, whether it's politically or indeed uh, he completely changed the media landscape when he created his group media set. Indeed. Hoda Abdul Hamid there, speaking to us from Sardinia and Italy. Thank you very much, Hoda. Well, let's now bring in Alan Friedman. He is a political commentator and also author of the biography, Berlusconi, the epic story of the billionaire who took over Italy. He joins us now from Lugano in Italy. Alan, you've spent a huge amount of time with Berlusconi. Can you perhaps share one or two of your more memorable moments with the man with us? Yeah, I used to go and see him after community service every Saturday when I was making my film. Uh, and uh, he was doing community service for having been convicted for tax fraud. He told a lot of stories. Um, I remember uh, at one point in his uh, vast, luxurious villa, he showed me his photo gallery uh, with pictures of Superman, uh, himself as Superman. <laughs> Then he said, would you like to see the famous Bunga Bunga room, which is the room where supposedly, according to the criminal trials he faced, he had brought underage prostitutes to have sex with. But it wasn't the Bunga Bunga room. It was just his dining room. And he used to joke like that. Um, he was a charming and charismatic person, but very controversial, as your own correspondent from Sardinia just noted. At the end, he was a, a pro-Putin uh, a friend. He was a controversial figure. He had survived 65, 70 different uh, criminal corruption cases. And his power was diminished at the end as Georgia Maloney of the right uh, mm. suppressed his liberal center-right vision and took over. And he became just a crutch for the new government. Uh, Alan, you've described him as the original populist. Do you think his flaws were part of his appeal? I think we have to understand there are three parts to the Berlusconi story as populist. Part one, he's a young real estate mogul and media tycoon who uh, lives in the bad old Italy and of corrupt old ways and gets things done and becomes a self-made man. Mm. Part two, he uses his media power and the purchase of a football team of Milan, AC Milan, to launch a populist message, Forza Italia, go Italy just like a football slogan. Mm -hmm. And yes, long before Trump, Silvio Berlusconi was the original populist. But then, like many populists, he didn't actually get much done. He just uh, served for a long time, mainly was occupied with preventing himself from facing legal jeopardy, mm -hmm. and did not do the economic and key reforms that Italy has failed to do for the last 30 years. So a flawed figure because Yes, a successful businessman. Yes, a dominant politician. But a man who is controversial and not loved by many, many Italians today. Sort of a parabola, kind mm -hmm. of a trajectory that went up and came down. That's a his life story. Alan, as you say, he wasn't just a politician, but this media mogul, uh, property tycoon. He was Italy's richest man at times in his career, after very modest beginnings, I understand. I wonder how he thought of himself in terms of self-reflection and his success. Did he share that with you? He did. I remember <clears throat> having dinner with Silvio Berlusconi in Sardinia at his uh, villa, and he looked around uh, at his girlfriend at the time and uh, at other guests, famous singers that he liked to hang out with, and he said, I'm a rock star, and everybody applauded. His own family and Tony Reynes and other singers applauded, and he said, I'm a rock star, and he saw himself. And the thing was interesting with, with Berlusconi. I asked him, do you see yourself as similar to Donald Trump? And he said, no, I don't, I don't think so. No, no, no. Because he, he looked down on Trump. Whereas Trump 
when I asked him, do you see yourself as Berlusconi? Trump said, <laughs> yeah, yeah, kind of. We're both rich, yeah. <laughs> very, very interesting thoughts there. Alan Friedman, uh, uh, one of Berlusconi's biographers um, who, who wrote the book. Berlusconi, the, the epic story. The only official authorized biographer. <laughs> I am the only official authorized biographer. Indeed. Where Berlusconi agreed. He didn't like the result of my work. He said I was too harsh on him because I put a chapter in about the mafia, and he didn't like that. But he did say that he trusted you. Well, Alan Friedman there, thank you very much for joining us here on Al Jazeera. Thank you for your time today. Thank you.